Good morning. morning. And may the Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Olertz, and welcome to Peace Lutheran Church as we gather together to worship our Lord and Savior uh, this morning. Also, a, it's a wonderful day. It is Mother's Day today, and it is a, a beautiful opportunity to celebrate motherhood and, uh, and the blessings that God gives to mothers and in, in our children, and that we can celebrate that so well. It is a bit, a bit of a bittersweet day, however, with everything that is going on uh, in the federal government <clears throat> regarding the Supreme Court decisions and all those things that are happening and, and the, uh, you know, the, the things that they're demonstrating against. Uh, but we pray that God will uh, help to uh, restore uh, these decisions regarding abortion and all that and that we will not have to keep dealing with this issue. But we know that we probably will. But today is an opportunity also <clears throat> for throughout our nation to celebrate motherhood. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and we will continue to do that here today as well. Uh, it is also Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, we, we also celebrate that opportunity to, uh, for Jesus to be our shepherd because we are uh, merely his sheep. Hold on a second. <laughs> Allergies. And it happens. Coming down here, you've got a lot of dust flying around uh, and everything. So, <laughs> And uh, so, so we also take an opportunity to celebrate Good Shepherd uh, Sunday as well, as we know that our Lord watches over us as we are his sheep. And, uh, you know, we are incapable of really taking care of ourselves, so we must also go to him for everything. And, um, and so we also remember that today as well. Let us uh, all stand and welcome one another with the peace of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good crowd. Let's all be seated now as we listen to the string coalition. Deep in the heart of the infinite darkness a tiny blue marble is spinning through space born in the splendor of God's holy vision and sliding away like a tear down his face Closer you see the whole wide holy wonder of oceans and mountains and rivers and trees and the strangest creation of many the human a creature of laughter and freedom and dreams Now the warriors are waving their sabers and there are those preaching the gospel of hate by their behavior determined to teach us a lesson we're soon to be learning 
closer, my brother, we're killing each other, and we'd better stop and get started today. Cause life is the question, and life is the answer, and God is the reason, and love is the way. Look closer, my brother, we're killing each other, and we'd better stop. And get started today Cause life is the question And life is the answer And God is the reason And love is the way Cause life is the question And life is the answer and God is the reason and love is the We begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, for you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We praise you, O Christ, as our good shepherd, for you willingly offered up your life to save us, your lambs and sheep. Yet we realize that it is on account of our wanderings that it became necessary for you to sacrifice all on our behalf. Therefore, we humbly come before you, confessing our sin and awaiting your word of forgiveness and comfort. St. Paul warned, 
I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. John was promised that in heaven God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. We confess that we have allowed the sorrows of this world to overshadow the certain faith the Holy Spirit has given us, at times diminishing or even forgetting the gracious promises you have made for the sake of Christ. Forgive us, Heavenly Father. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We confess that too often we have been wandering sheep, following the temptations of our fallen world, instead of paying attention to our shepherd's voice. Forgive us, Heavenly Father. Jesus conveys beautiful promises to all those whom the Father has given him as his flock with these words. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is from Acts chapter 20. In these verses, the Apostle Paul warns church leaders that the evil one will attempt to destroy the church through false teaching. From Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the whole time I was with you, from the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I, among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Revelation chapter 7. John is blessed with a vision of heaven and to see the lamb who was slain, now reigning on his throne. After this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, 
standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes, and they were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise, and glory, and wisdom, and thanks, and honor, and power, and strength, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning.
Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus declares that no one can take his faithful people from his hand. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. I and the father are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us now together confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I would now like to invite our younger children forward for a special children's message. You don't even have to be young. You can still come on up anyway. Boys and girls, great. It's nice to have you here today. You guys remember, it's Mother's Day, right? Yeah, I hope that you all told your mom, you know, happy Mother's Day and how much you guys love her. I hope you did that. I know sometimes we tend to forget those things because they take care of us every day. And I I hope that you remember that every day as well. It is also Good Shepherd Sunday, and we remember that because... We are his sheep, and I know I've talked about that before, about being sheep, and we are in need of his protection, okay? So with that in mind, I have a little test for you guys, okay? You know what a test is, right? That uh, if, you go to, if you're going to school, you have to have a test once in a while to see if you remember something, but now this should be easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you something, something that somebody says, and I want you to tell me who that is, okay? First one, to infinity and beyond. (laughs) That one? (laughs) All right. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. Some people are worth melting for. You know that? Olaf, yeah. You guys know that. Okay, this might be a little harder. Just keep swimming. Oh, you got that right away. (laughs) Okay, this is a real hard one. Me want cookie. Okay, now I got a real hard one. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep follow me. Who's that? Oh, of course it is, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you see him up there on the screen, too. I told him not to put him up too quickly. I didn't want you to look up there and know who it was. Yeah, well, the, the reason I did that is because as we go to church, 
and Sunday school and things like that, we hear about the Word of God and we read Scripture, we read the Bible, we hear the Bible read to us, and also we start to remember these things, you know, that are said in there, particularly that about Jesus. And it's really good because he tells us he is the good shepherd. He says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me, right? He also says a lot of other things that are wonderful too. And he says that, he says, love each other as I have loved you. Now that might be a little bit harder, right? Because Jesus loves everybody, but sometimes we don't always love everybody, but we need to try to do that, shouldn't we? That we need to try to uh, look and do the things that Jesus does for us that we would do to others. And when we come here to church, we hear about those things. And especially that we would love Jesus as our Savior, but that we would also love others as well. And then if they don't go to church, we would invite them to come and be part of this family as well. Okay? All right, let us pray about that. Okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Mother's Day for our mothers and for all the care and love that they give to us, but also that we, we thank Jesus for being our good shepherd, that he watches over us as children, also our parents, and everybody else too. And we, we ask that he would just continue to look upon us and care for us each and every day and encourage us in our walk with him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls, for coming up. Grace, peace, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
Having gathered us here today to worship you and to hear your word, we also ask that you have sent your Holy Spirit among us, that you have opened our hearts and minds to your word, and that we will leave here uplifted with joy, knowing how much you love us and what you have done, uh, that you have sacrificed your Son for our sake, so that we may receive the forgiveness of sins and that promise of eternal life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It's only been a few weeks since we celebrate Easter, and I pray that the message of Jesus' victory over sin, death, and the devil are still very fresh in your hearts and your minds. With great joy and confidence, I am reminded of the events of that first Easter as the end of a raging war between Jesus and Satan, between the forces of good and evil, with Jesus emerging as the victor by his resurrection from the dead. It is my prayer that the special events of Holy Week will have a lasting and positive effect on the people of this nation and throughout the entire world. Well, and you know, it really should because the power of sin, death, and the devil have been overcome. Unfortunately, incredible evil activity still continues on each day as if the message of Easter has never been heard. As I was preparing my message for today, I especially focused on verse 29 of our reading from Acts. The Apostle Paul speaks to the elders of the church of Ephesus with these words of warning. He said, I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come among you and will not spare the flock. As I read over that one verse about savage wolves, it brought to mind many of the evil activities that seem to persist throughout the world. And because evil is so prevalent everywhere, no one is immune from the effect of evil because we never know where it might come from. But Paul was especially aware of the evil that people are capable of doing because he was often the target of evil people. But in this particular warning, I believe that Paul was specifically referring to the evil that was being directed to the church and to the people of the church. He told them, be diligent, be on guard, because the savage wolves will come from both directions. They will come from outside the church, and they will come from inside the church as well. Now, even though this warning was given to the church about 2,000 years ago, it is a warning that is applicable for us today as well. The point is that the event of Christ's death and resurrection was significant in what it accomplished. But unfortunately, that battle against sin, death, and the devil, it still rages on. Oh, we know that it will come to an end soon enough. But the effect of sin and the influence of Satan will continue. It will continue to increase pain, suffering, and death of countless people throughout the world until Christ returns and puts an end to it all. Satan continually promotes and encourages the evil that people are capable of doing. But I believe that Satan is especially focused on the church. He knows that his evil work against the church and against Christians can be very discouraging and cause many people, many people, to fall away. You know, Satan doesn't care how it's done. As long as we are engaged in a battle against one another. If we are in fear of our own lives or if we are focused on fighting with each other, then we are certainly not acting as Christians or doing God's work. So the battlefield is wherever Satan wants it to be. Right now, the battlefield is in Russia and Ukraine over greed and power and control over land 
and control over other people. The battlefield is in Iraq, Syria, and Afghanistan over political, religious, and cultural differences. The battlefield is in the poppy fields of Asia and South America over drugs. And the battlefield is in the streets of every city in America with crime fueled by prejudice, hate, and greed. And unfortunately, the battlefield is also in the homes of many families who struggle with their problems, tearing apart husband-wife relationships and parent-child relationships. Wherever there is trouble, Satan appears to win. The savage wolves are everywhere, and they seem to have us surrounded. Paul warned the elders of the church of Ephesus that savage wolves are waiting at the door, and they will not spare the flock. So the problem is trying to recognize the wolves. So Paul uses an example that is familiar to the people. In those days, shepherds watched over their flocks, and it was fairly easy to spot a wolf trying to sneak up and attack the flock of sheep. It was the shepherd's main job to be on the lookout for anything that could harm the sheep and to keep the flock safe. However, when it comes to people, you know, it's not so easy to tell the sheep from the wolves. Many times the wolves look exactly like the sheep, at least on the surface. Therefore, we are familiar with the saying that says, Beware of a wolf in sheep's clothing. This particular saying refers to a person who hides malicious and evil intent and under the deception of doing good. So when it comes to people, the only way to tell the difference between a sheep and a wolf is to observe the things that they do over a period of time. Eventually, a wolf's real nature will become evident and then their true intentions will be exposed. They'll be exposed whether it is in business or politics or even in the church. Therefore, we must be extremely diligent. In his parting message, Paul warns the elders of the church that people from the outside of the church and from people from within the church will rise up to distort the truth attempting to draw people away from the faith. They will use every evil means to divide and destroy the ministry and to disrupt the work that God intends to be done within the church. The attack against the church was very evident from the beginning when Christ established the Christian church on the day of Pentecost. And that attack against the Christian church continues to this very day. One might wonder then, what purpose did Christ's death and resurrection achieve if we must continue to endure this unending battle against good and evil? Even though we were vividly reminded of the purpose during Holy Week and then again on Easter, we need to be reminded today. We actually need to be reminded every week. Sin, death, and the devil were defeated on that first Easter morning. But they were not eliminated. Oh, I'm certain that we all wish that they were eliminated, but that significant event is reserved for a time in the near future when Christ returns in all his glory. For now, we still live in a world that is corrupted by sin. And our body and soul are still influenced by our sinful nature. And Satan and his evil angels are still running at large throughout the world doing their evil work. Therefore, we will still be affected by these things. But you know, we don't have to submit to them because through Christ we have the power to resist and overcome. 
everywhere we look, we can see all kinds of sinful activities. Everywhere we go, we are confronted by temptation and encouraged to surrender to the evil ways of this world. And we also know that death surrounds us because we see people die every day due to the consequence of sin from sickness, accident, crime, and old age. So it's clear to us that these things have not been eliminated yet. However, there is hope and joy in all of this because Christ has overcome all these things. Christ's death and resurrection has eliminated the penalty of sin. Unfortunately, we still will continue to sin. But all who repent and believe in Jesus as their Savior, we know that our sins are forgiven. The penalty of sin which brings eternal death no longer hangs over us. Oh yes, we will all die one day. But for every believer, death of our bodies is merely a transition from this life of sin and sorrow to a life of eternal happiness in the presence of God in heaven. And in the near future, Satan will be locked away forever in the depths of hell to receive eternal punishment for his rebellion against God and for all his evil work against God's people. So for now, we need to follow the advice of Apostle Paul. Be on your guard. Every day we hear of crimes being committed, homes are broken into and being robbed, people are mugged and raped and, or murdered, the elderly are being deceived out of their life savings by con artists, and politicians are elected to serve the needs of the people, but many forget their commitments as they serve themselves instead. Our basic needs of health, education, and public safety are jeopardized when needed funds are mismanaged or spent on other special interests. You know, all these things are terrible crimes against humanity, but it, it is even worse when this kind of evil strikes the church. We can endure a lifetime of difficulty as long as our faith remains secure. But you know, Satan, he knows what is really important to us. He knows that it is faith in Christ that saves us. It isn't our jobs or money that saves us. It isn't our homes or cars that save us. It isn't even the government or the military that saves us. But it is what happens inside the church that brings forgiveness and salvation. It is the preaching of the gospel. It is the administration of the sacraments. It is the encouragement that we receive within the fellowship of believers. Therefore, we must be on guard. We must be on guard to protect what God has given to us at the price of his son. We must be on guard to protect his church and to protect the truth of the gospel. He has given us the opportunity to worship without fear or persecution and to seek refuge from the evil of the world. He has given us his word of truth so that we may know the way to forgiveness and salvation. Above all, it is his church that we must guard and protect. Above all, it is his ministry that we must guard and protect. Above all, it is the truth of his word that we must guard and protect. As a final declaration to the elders of Ephesus, Paul says that he is innocent of the blood of all men. But in this statement, he's saying that he has faithfully declared the truth of God's word. And he has encouraged the people night and day to be faithful to Christ, to, to the church, and to each other. 
But he's also saying this. He cannot force anyone to believe or to be faithful. That work is up to the Holy Spirit. In this life, we must continually resist our sinful nature because the forces of evil are constantly upon us. And even though we live in a world that is consumed with evil, we are encouraged by our faith. We who have been baptized and believe in Jesus as our Savior have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And one day, we will all be standing before the throne of God, leaving this life of sin behind us. The encouragement for us today is that God will protect us from the evil that surrounds us. Even when the savage wolves come and attack our country, our home, our families, and yes, even our church, God will protect us. Jesus is the good shepherd. He knows each of you by name. Be faithful to him. And one day, you will be one of those who are dressed in white, standing before the throne of God, praising him for all that he has done. Let us together look forward to the day that when we will never again thirst or hunger or feel the scorching heat of the sun upon our backs. There will be no more sorrow or pain, and he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Believe with all your heart. The war is won, and you are the victor. Praise be to God for what he has done through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now honor our Lord and Savior with our offerings in support of his ministry at this church. Please be seated. I would now like to ask Mike and Peggy Magbury to come forward and also Doug Williams as they will be received into membership of our church.
dear friends in Christ. The members of our congregation are happy that you are here to become part of our Christian fellowship. Our Lord Jesus bids us to confess him before men with the promise that he will then confess us before his Father in heaven. That we may rejoice in your confession, I now ask you in the presence of God and of this congregation, do you accept and confess that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know them from the small catechism, are faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. As a member of this church, do you intend to continue in the confession of this church, to faithfully attend corporate worship, make diligent use of the means of grace, and to lead a righteous and godly life? If so, answer, I do so intend with the help of God. I do so intend with the help of God. Will you faithfully support the work our gracious Lord has given to this congregation with your prayers, time, treasure, and talent? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Upon this, your confession of faith, I, in the name of this congregation, acknowledge you as members of Peace Lutheran Church and invite you to participate in all the blessings of salvation which God has given to his church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in baptism, you began your good work in these, your people, who stand before you today. We pray that you will bless them as they worship you, study your word, and become actively involved in your ministry of peace. Uplift them and grant them an abundance of your blessings through this fellowship of believers. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. And I'd just ask you to turn around for just a moment. I just want everybody to see our new members. And this is... <laughs> Now, now, this is Mike and Peggy Mabry and Doug Williams, and I'm sure you're going to remember their names, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we thank them for <laughs> and we thank them for coming. Okay, you guys can go back and be seated. Thank you very much. As we continue on with our prayers. We uh, ask for these special prayers for Alan Wood, who is uh, recovering from surgery. He's in rehab now. And for Kevin Dix, Terry Dix's husband, who is in the hospital uh, struggling with uh, heart issues and is, will be undergoing open heart surgery tomorrow. And uh, we give a prayer of thanks for Heather Albrecht. And uh, as she is recovering from her hip surgery, she is now at home. We also have a prayer from Maria for uh, Jada Lusk, who is uh, starting medical school in August, and we pray for his hand of blessing upon her and also for her grandson, David, uh, who will be graduating from high school in August, or it actually in May, I'm sorry. So let us all stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, in your name your Son purchased us with his own most holy blood and now leads us through the gate of death to our eternal home with you as the sheep of his fold. Inspire us to hear his voice gladly and to follow him steadfastly through every trial and trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, shepherd of our souls, your servant Paul entrusted his flock to the care of faithful men urging them to follow him in, in the way of Christ. Bless your church today under the care of her pastors and instill in them all wisdom, fortitude, humility, and grace. And we also ask that you continue to bless and guide Reverend Garrett Smith as he prays about his call to serve at peace. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, you have provided us with the gift of family. Bless those who have shown us a mother's love and nurtured our lives from childhood. Bless and protect all mothers with child and all those who look forward to the day that you will grant them this very special blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, 
You will not allow any power or enemy to triumph over your saving purpose or snatch your lambs from your hand. Give us wise and faithful leaders who will govern our land according to your law and defend the lives of the unborn, the orphaned, the widowed, the aged. Bless all those who make, administer, and judge our laws that they may not hinder your purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, you have not forgotten us in our afflictions or abandoned us in our weakness. Deliver the sick and the suffering according to your will and grant comfort to the dying, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Alan and Kevin and Heather and Jada and David. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the days of our trouble as we await your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, by your grace, bless Mike, Peggy, and Doug, who have today been received as members of peace. As they receive your blessings through the church, grant them the joy and the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus as their Savior. Guide them and help them to live their lives as a blessing to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, enthroned in heaven, you gather your saints into the shelter of your presence by making them white in the blood of the Lamb. Keep us faithful throughout our lives here and bring us through the death to join them in ceaseless praises of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Please be seated for a few moments. The, uh, please take a note of all the announcements that are printed in the bulletin as well. And we also have a time of fellowship in the fellowship hall. And after that, we begin Sunday school and adult Bible instruction at about 1030. Any other announcements? Go in peace, serve the Lord.